model HA3500 350 watts amp Hartka head. Low pass, high pass volume, and 10 channel graphic equalizer, compression, and two separate volumes for the tube and the solid state so you can find that sweet tone. So I'm having problems with it and I'm going to be troubleshooting it. I'm pretty sure it's not a blown speaker. And what I'm thinking is, is that somewhere in this zone, the active input that there is uh, probably a loose wire or a broken solder point. So I've already opened up and uh, I've cleaned it out a little bit. I'm going to give it a better cleaning soon, but I, when you open stuff up like this, the first thing you want to do is get out all the obvious trash and uh, stuff like this, these little protectors. One of these came off, you know, you got to keep an eye out for that. It's important that that's there because there's not very much room between this capacitor and the lid that goes on top of it. And also, while you're in, before you even do any work, you start looking around for loose connections. Make sure, and all the ones that are underneath too, you want to make sure that they're all in you know, any kind of, if the, if the ground is broken, you want to check that too, because, you know, if you're playing in the rain, you don't want to be getting shocked. And stuff like this likes to come out too. Plastic, it gets brittle with age, and it'll break easy. And check your resistors too. Like these, these are, this resistor right here, you don't want to touch the, um, you don't want to touch the exposed wire. What you want to do is you want to look at the wire. There you go. You want to look at the wire and make sure that there's no crack or stress points in it. And also, and all these capacitors, see how they got a, a cross, cross session on it? That's so it'll explode if it overloads. And these are basically like uh, temporary batteries. And, uh, and my grandfather taught me when I was a kid when he was showing me how to do circuit boards and troubleshoot them. Uh, follow your nose. So you'll, you'll smell it if something is blown. Especially these capacitors. Man, they stink when they blow. And check these two. These plastic connectors right here, like I said. And you want to kind of wiggle the wires and see if they come out or not. Right? Because a loose wire will make your, your sound go in and out. These are the procedures to troubleshoot. Whatever moves the most is usually going to be what's broken down. Whatever gets heated up the most is usually what's going to be broken down. Inputs are also very prone to being broken down. There's a little tongue on the other side of these inputs they can usually get bent out of shape or get a little bit loose. And sometimes it's just as simple as just bending that tongue over so that it pushes up against the, um, the quarter inch cable better. And also, same with the power. The power input is also what will break. Something will get loose, like a neutral. You'll see power running into it and turning on and off. And that usually means that a neutral is loose or broken. And I don't know if you can see it here. There it is right there. Under, not this. Not this part. It's, the, it's that piece right there. You want to check that. Check your inputs. Your audio inputs. And your power. That's the first thing you check. Alright. I've done pulled out the fuse casing. See how that one right there on the right has got a little bit of a bulb on it? But it's not broken so it might have been manufactured that way but as long as it's not broken plug it in let it go and make sure that you have extras of this fuse just in case it does decide to go or both of them canned air is your friend yeah you see that piece right there i'm gonna have to find a way to glue it on Get the fan. 
Get the fan real good. Both sides. Hear that sucker spinning? <laughs> oh man, this can is getting cold. I'm starting to run out of juice here. All right. And check your tube on all sides, all the way around. And you'll know if it's blown, if it's got like a, it, it'll be obvious. It'll, it'll look like there was an explosion inside of the vacuum tube. All right, now, my amp is, is playing on and off. Sometimes it sounds good. Sometimes it starts crumbling like there's something breaking the circuit and it's losing, it's losing some signal. And uh, I turned up the volume on the tube and uh, there was, I could hear the tube kicking in. So it's not the tube. So I don't even need to pull this thing out and put a tester on it because I have a tube volume to test it with. So I'm, th and I've checked the power. The power is good. The power button is good. So it's these inputs that I gotta check. Now that I have the passive and active inputs disconnected from the whole system itself, I'm going to run my ohm meter. I set my meter to ohms, and I'm gonna make sure that ground is ground power is power and neutral is neutral on this. So I tested it and everything tested good. So, and it turned out to be what I thought it was gonna be. Inside, there's a little, there's a little tongue in there. You can see a little bit, you can, there it is. You can see it shining just a little bit. And I pushed that thing out. Um, and I had to get, and I didn't, I didn't wanna have to uh, remelt the solder and pull it off. And I used this. I stuck this up underneath of it, got up on it, and pushed it right on it, and, and pushed it a little extra. And uh, this is just a temporary fix. And the active input, I got an active base, so I use it the most. I hardly ever put anything into the passive. So once I got this thing out and had full access to the inputs, when I put the quarter inch jack in, I could feel it wobbling all over the place. So uh, yeah, it was the tongue. The tongue is where the, uh, the signal actually runs because this part right here is just your, your negative, your return. And you're gonna wanna double check everything to make sure that you have all of your tools out and everything is out of the way before you do your live test. Make sure everything is exactly the way it was before. In fact, it's usually a good idea that when you're doing things like this, to either take pictures, take notes, or in this case, take videos, so you can go back and look at it and make sure you put it all back together again the same way you took it apart. All right, so I have it powered up and it did not smoke or explode. Now, uh, when you're inside of this while it's hot, just be very aware that this sucker can pull up to 350 watts. You don't want to get tied up in any of this. All right, so be very careful when you're messing with an open test. So now that I got it open, I'm gonna plug my base in, I'm gonna give it a run, and see if I'm still having the same issues before I go ahead and close everything up. Got my Trace Elliott cabinet here. Got it all hooked up, all powered up, ready to go. I got it plugged into the active. Now I jiggled uh, the cable and uh, it's still, it's making a disconnect, but that just, that just means that eventually I need to just change out the entire output system and put new, uh, I'm sorry, change out the whole uh, input system and put new inputs in. But for now, it's working. that B string going sounds really good it ain't dropping out on me uh, it's it's a straight signal strong and that is it she will work just fine as long as I do not put severe stress on the connection between the cord and the active input